This is To The Point. A Rhino experience. Voted one of the top home services marketing and operations podcasts. Cutting through the bullshit and getting to the point. Hey, what's up to the point listeners? It's your boy, the host of To The Point Home Services Podcast, Chris Yano. And again, we are live at another event. At this time, it's RoofCon. And we are in Orlando, Florida. Again with me is a guest co-host, goes by the name of The Jeff. Je- Jeff, welcome, buddy. You're on uh, podcast Numero Dos. Numero Dos, first Louisville, now Orlando. We're excited to be here. It's uh, Louisville. 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 Yeah, so if you hear these loud bangs in the background, um, there's some cornhole games going on right behind us. So uh, we're legit live right in the middle of the uh, expo floor. And we've got a great guest, one that I'm connected to. But only because we're both Hoosiers. 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 Nobody I mean, cares. I mean, <laughs> not that I'm a Hoosiers as in IU fan. I am a Boilermaker fan, but we are both from Indiana. So always great having one of my boys on from back home. So I'm excited to have Aaron Christie on the show. Aaron, welcome, bro. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, looking forward to it. So you're a Purdue fan. Pull her up. All right. Daughter is a diehard Purdue fan. Oh, At 14, God. she saved up her own money to get season tickets uh, and goes to every football game. So a girl. We got, we got Purdue in our house, too. Well, she got to be a real big fan to save up money to go to Purdue football games <laughs> because they are <laughs> all atrocious. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm a Notre atrocious. Dame fan. So. Are you guys Carson Edwards fans? Uh, maybe. Uh, basketball. Yeah. All right. I, I don't watch uh, Purdue, really. I'm a Notre Dame guy. I don't blame so, you. Yeah. Oh, so you just watched Notre Dame uh Put the smack down on them last weekend. Yeah, we actually. Well, I took my daughter to the game. Oh, we that's drove good. Up there, so you, yeah. and you you made her go and watch them lose. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah man, I'm like enjoy good. this in person. You're a great. <laughs> you're a great dad. Good dad. <laughs> so let's do this. Okay, so Indie Roof Company is the name of your company. Um, and you started it how long ago? Like uh, 18 or something. Yeah, like that? end of 2018. In 2018. So for our listeners, um, the reason I wanted to have Aaron on here was because obviously we have a ton of listeners that are HVAC, plumbing, electrical, garage doors, like all home services type stuff. A lot of the story, a lot of the things that he's implemented, a lot of things he's done in his business is no different than yours. Um, we have a lot of roofing companies that have come in and I actually, uh, uh, or that have been listening and reaching out more and more frequently. So um, what I want you to do is just share a little bit of, uh, to, for our listeners, let them know kind of how you got into the, just to, like roofing in general, the trades in general. Right. And then walk us through up to where the business is at today because it's been extremely successful and you know, aren't successful by accident. Yeah. So you have to put some things in place. You probably learned some shit along the way. Yeah, a lot. Um, and so what we'll do is just share with the listeners a little bit of your story, how you got into it, and, um, and I'll kind of poke and prod some questions along the way along with the Jeff. So you ready? Yeah, Let's absolutely, go. man. Let's so uh, this is actually, if you would have asked me, uh, five years ago, if I was going to be a general contractor, I've been like, you're crazy. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, I was in the corporate world uh, for a family business for 16 years. And uh, it ended up, it was a lot of traveling. And I was home a week, gone a week, home a week, gone a week. And I'm married now. I got three daughters. What, what'd uh, you do? You said you're in the... Uh, the easiest way to explain it is I was a recruiter for a nursing school. Okay. And so I would travel to like Texas and meet with LPNs and LVNs that wanted to be RNs and you know, go to different states. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so I did that a lot. And it got to the time where I was like, hey, I don't want to travel anymore. So I was looking at, I actually started a furniture store originally. Uh, furniture is a huge racket. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, and it's hard as shit. To <laughs> yeah. sit. I- There's like 300% markup on furniture. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, so I started a furniture store. And while I was building it out, my buddy, uh, there was a guy that was like one guy, one truck type of deal. And he left to go be an adjuster. And he just like gave my buddy his business and was like, hey, man, can you answer some of these? And my buddy had a tile company, so he doesn't know anything about (laughs) roofs at all. He was like, hey, man, do you want to sell some roofs with me? And I love selling stuff. So I was like, yeah, sure, man. So we like studied uh, over 2017 winter. We just started studying a lot of information like on our own YouTube. What information out there? Fortunately, in the roofing industry, people will share information. Absolutely. Um, It's a really cool industry. And so we learned a lot on our own throughout the winter and then spring rolls around roofing season comes in this guy comes back from virginia um not a huge fan of the guy i mean it is what it is but we decided i we sold three roofs for him i sold three roofs for him and decided hey this isn't for me you said game over yeah i just i didn't didn't work out gotcha Uh, so i went back focusing on my furniture store i was doing that um, I, while I was studying, I developed these relationships with realtors, which is perpetual business. That's certainly right? helpful in roofing. Yeah, absolutely. And so I had a realtor call me in like July of 2018. And they were like, hey, I have, uh, I have this roof that I need done. 
oh, hey, let me see if I can, how I can help you. So like I put a, put together a company real quick. I called and got a crew. I did this and I did this roof. And, uh, and I was like four grand, you know, that you made real quick. And I'm like, that's awesome. And I'm like, now I have a company and uh, I like roofing more than furniture sales. I'm out and about. Uh, I'm not stuck in an office all day sitting there, you know, talking right. to people about selling discount mattresses yeah, and sure. things like that. And so I was like, well, we had the storm in August 28th of 2018. I'm like, okay, big hail storm came through, yep. hit a nice part of town. And I was like, well, if I have this company, let's see what I can do. So I did some guerrilla marketing to a bunch of realtors. And uh, man, we just like blew up You mean overnight. like, were you picking up the phone and like just call, straight up calling them? Um, you not directly. Like, I, I went through and I talked to a lot of them and I got a lot of their information and I started sending them messages okay. um, saying like, hey, here's a hail map. If you have any listings in these areas, hit me up. I'll go check it out. That way you don't get jammed up at closing. Gotcha. You know so, what I mean? So you were almost taking this like educational approach like, hey, man, here's some info on you. And by the yeah. way, I can help you take care of this. Yeah. It's well, it's about bringing them value instead of asking them for business. Right. Right. And so I brought them value and say, hey, here's a hail map. You can share it with your customers. If there's anything in this area, you know, da, 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 and I'm here if you need me type of deal. And uh, man, I had like 14 inspections the next day. But then the realtor community is a small community. So my information got passed around to a lot of realtors. And so for me, I got really busy as a one person show. And I closed the furniture store. I love roofing way more. I started doing that full time. Uh, like September of 2018. Okay, so that's what I was going to say. When was the transition into like full full roofing? So did you become an official business in 2018? Is that when you... Jul yeah, July of 2018. Okay, so so now we're into 2000, uh, 2018. Yeah, so uh, it was just me. And for the first... Um, man, for the first year, it was basically just me and I was learning. You know, you go out and I haven't been in the industry. I told you guys I was corporate. Right. I get it. Yeah. And so like I'm learning everything. So and so I'm going to every trade show. I'm going to, uh, you know, talk to as many people as possible. I'm just I that's the one good thing about me not coming from the industry is I knew that I didn't know everything. And there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I've been doing this for 20 years. You know, there's nothing you can teach me. And I'm like, you can't have Imposter that. Imposter syndrome. Yeah. I love well, it. And things constantly change. So even if you've been in 30 years, new shit's coming out every day. For sure. You got to be progressive. Yeah. So uh, that was the good news. I knew I didn't know. I'm going to say everything, anything, really. And so I just went through and learned and learned and learned and learned. And then so that went through um, another 2018 winter. We just, I spent my time learning. And then 2019, um, we brought a couple guys on. But still, it was like me and a couple part-time guys. Um, the guy that actually asked me to sell roofs with him ended up coming over. Him and his brother came <laughs> over, and now That's they cool. work with me now. <laughs> so, um, But it was them for a while. We went through 2019. We did uh, me and two part-time guys. We did $1.8 million uh, in 2019. Uh, then over 2019, uh, did the same thing, study, learn, grow. And it was at that point that I was like, hey, you know what? I'm ready to grow now. I feel like I have enough information. We've, we've set up a good system. And I know that if we plug more people in, that system will make them successful. So you became scalable because you had the right processes and systems in place that you knew like, okay, I move this lever, this happens. Correct. 100%. Weird how that works in business. I yeah. know. <laughs> it's weird. So, <clears throat> so uh, I brought on a friend of mine um, that was a good manager. And he came in, we had a lot of people coming to us for jobs because we're starting to kind of show our face around Indiana. Okay, so, so you're starting to gain some brand equity and people are coming yeah. to you looking for a job. Exactly. So you're not even, okay. Exactly. Right. We've never actively, we have currently 24 sales reps. We've never actively recruited sales reps. Every single person's That's come to us. That's fantastic, man. Yeah. Great branding is yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yes, 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we went from at the beginning of 2020 which we did 1.8 million in 2019. Beginning of 2020, we started with four sales reps. Uh, we got up to about eight through storm season, and then we continued to grow by the end of the year, we were at 17. So we ended the year at 17, and we did um, uh, about 9 million uh, last year. That's and meteoric dude, rise. Yeah. Making leaps, so like our, leaps. Yeah, our second full year, we did mm -hmm. almo almost 10 million, um, which was great. Now we continue to recruit and grow, and like you said, our processes, yep. right? So we continue to improve on those. Uh, we brought a really great guy in this year. His name's Adam Kaminsky. Uh, he's our COO now, and he is just a badass at processes and systems and all of this stuff. So we're even refining it even more. And now we're up to 24 reps. I think we're on track to do 13 million this year. 
Uh, and so it was kind of a crazy story how I went from having a furniture store Dude. to somebody asking me to sell <laughs> roofs to where we're at today. Dude, this is actually super inspiring because like even whenever you and I got to talk the other day, you know, in preparation for right. this, just kind of hearing your story, kind of hearing the background. And I would have thought you were in business for 10 years before you said 2018. I was like, no shit, 2018. Yeah. <laughs> what I love about that story is how quickly it's happened. Yeah. But you said a couple of key things in there that I think the listeners need to pay close attention to. This is something that comes up often is that obviously processes and systems are an absolute must. Yes. Even if even if they aren't completely working, doing something, putting something in place and following it and then refining it as you're yeah. going through over and over again um, is something you have to have in place if you legit want to scale your business and scale it profitably, mind you. Yeah. But then the second thing you just said was um, that I wanted to make sure I, I did give a shout out for is you brought on Adam. Adam come from a, a monster private, uh, private firm um, or a private company in Indianapolis market who came up with a lot of uh, leadership skills, knowledge, things like this, that then yep. you took and implemented that person into your business. So he didn't come from the industry, nope. and you don't need that person to come from the industry to be able to come in and have an immediate impact on the industry. Sometimes it's good to not even have you know, have somebody not even come from your industry, yeah. implement their point of view, their things that they've learned, and then into your business and help them scale. This is where a lot of companies miss, is they feel like they gotta bring somebody from the industry. Yeah. But really good leadership, really good management, I'm seeing more and more, even our big, big players, like the half a billion dollar guys, the big guys are bringing people from outside the industry and plugging them in and using their systems. So kudos to you for that. Yeah, I think their eyeballs are untainted. So they are seeing yeah, we'll things agree. that you are not seeing and right. vice versa. So I think, you know, I've met Adam, great guy, super smart. I'm excited for where you guys are going to go. But kudos to you. You know, a lot of guys, you know, self-operators, they can't get off the roof because they don't bring key people in to help run that business. So I think that was a great decision. Yeah, I agree 100%. And like, actually, we don't, have anybody really from the industry at all in our company. Interesting. Um, That's bad so is, that, is it common? Is that common? I don't think so, but I'm not positive. Is uh, it by design? It is specifically by design because I think when I came in, I didn't come from another roofing company. And right. so I didn't have a set way on how I, so I just started looking like, hey, what's best, what's best, what's best. And so I feel like I put together a system that's worked really well for us. Uh, and so I didn't want to have to bring anybody in that's like, hey, I've been doing it this yeah, way yeah. and this. So like we've taught everybody fresh, hey, this is how we do things. And I think the key to kind of what you guys were talking about, like when Adam comes in uh, and these people that come in, like if you talk to any successful business owner, they hire people that are smarter and better at them in certain things. Period. Are, are you talking about me and Chris? Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. He said smarter and better. I, I love it, Aaron. I love it. It's not that smarter. was a plug. At, that was a dig at Chris. I know it was. Uh, no, no, man. So, but it, I mean, it's, it's set you up for that. Uh, yeah. Oh, I sons like of it. Bitches, sons of Aaron's bitches. my man. <laughs> Sorry, man. What were you saying? Oh no, man. I'm just saying, like. Adam's uh, head and shoulders uh, better than me at management and leadership and, and systems and processes. Jeff and Chris. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. Um, so, so I mean, for those who might be listening for the first time, um, because we've been picking up more and more roofing contractors listening, um, is I'm also the com uh, CEO of a company called Rhino Strategic Solutions, which is a digital marketing company for the trade since 2008. So I'm like an OG in home services for internet marketing, basically lead generation. Yep. So we got a big team, we got about 130 Rhinos. Um, but the thing I've, I've been doing more and more, I've kind of, kind of like you, Aaron, is I learned the business by being in it. Like yep. I would, I didn't really, like as I've got, went through it, I've gotten better and, uh, and been able to scale the, the company to be successful. Yep. But the thing that I've been doing re uh, recently that we're super blessed for is our brand equity is really, really great. And, um, mm -hmm. it's attracting great management, great leadership. Yep. So, you know, we've added on a couple of key roles that kind of came from outside of the, the industry who've come in and, and, you know, big, strong implementers. So this whole management piece is so key. And there's actually different layers of accountability. There's different um, strategic, you know, thinking that goes into these, when you bring in somebody who's got, who's not been jaded per se by the, by the industry. So yep. I, I, management's huge. If you need to scale, you got to have it in place because you sure as shit can't do it all yourself effectively. 100% you cannot. You have to have people in place. And I found that out because I was doing a lot of stuff juggling in 2020. And eventually you're just like, hey, you got to go through, trust your people 100%. that you're doing the right thing. And then, you know, yeah, you got to give them the opportunity to fail. Like, yeah. You got to give them the opportunity to fuck it up. And then you and then you can go back and then you and you use that as a way to not let it happen again. As a coaching session, as constructive criticism. 100 percent. I fucked up a lot of stuff. And but I'll tell you what, I felt like an idiot and I never did it again. Yeah. So it's learning from all of those things. Yeah, perfect. Well, so then here's what I want to do. Um, and this is something where, um, you know, I'm giving a keynote today, which I'm really excited to talk about. And I really hope what I, I say hits home because I've, you know, I've been fortunate enough to work along some of these monster companies and help them grow. And that's what I'm sharing with these guys. Um, but what I always love to talk about is the, uh, the differentiators because you, 
listen, you do the same shit as the other roofer in that market and the other roofer in that market. You're doing the same thing. Yep. So you can't sell based on just what you do. Like something has to be done prior to that because y'all do the same thing. Yeah. So um, what are you doing or what is it that sets Indie Roof Company apart from everybody else in your market? Or what's kind of your like unique sales proposition that says, this is why you use us versus the, the next company? Um, I think we, one, we've really worked on our branding. Uh, we do, uh, we've got great branding. Uh, Huge help. Yes, absolutely, man. It's, it's done really well for us um, because we put our branding on everything as well. So like, this is going to be a plug for a couple companies, but like we, uh, we use the catch-all systems yep. uh, and then we use equipters. And so the catch-alls have our branding on them. The equipter, we wraps with Indie Roof. It's super cool, man. Ah, very uh, cool. So wrapped around the entire thing. So if you were in a neighborhood, right? And you look, hey, hailstorm comes through, wipes out other houses, and then door knockers are coming through, and people are picking people, and then the other guys are watching to see what happens. And you see a roof that's getting put on by a crew that's got some blue tarps laying across the bushes, you know, and all this. And then you see next door a guy with a cool netting system that blocks the entire fascia of the home. And then this equipter that they're dropping stuff down into with the tear off, instead of just throwing it down on the flowers and the bushes, who are you going to call? Yeah, so, okay. That makes perfect sense because now they're driving by and they're like, well, I had the same problem. This guy's taking care of stuff. He's not jacking up my yard, my bushes that I've spent all this time and money on and making sure that I take care of People love their bushes. They sure <laughs> do love their bushes. Um, I'm going to let Jeff, don't even go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, even go there, Jeff. <laughs> you meant knock down roses is what you were Jeff. talking yeah, about. Yeah, right? Exactly. Jeff, yeah. We should have said flowers. But yeah, because it's, it's, a, uh, you know, it's a visual product at that point. Like you're yeah. seeing, hey, th- uh, this is what I mean. I, you can clearly see that it's a roofing company, but they're actually taking care of your stuff. So that's a differentiator between somebody going to a tarp. Makes sense. So you make it makes sense to spend the money on these things because it actually adds additional yeah, our, value. Our equipters are $40,000 a piece. Uh, I mean, it's really, they do a great job. They, they work really well. The crews love them, but they're just as valuable for marketing as they are for actual use. Yeah, so you're wrapping them, is that what you said? Oh yeah, they're wrapped, they're super cool. Love it. In the the black, blue, and gray? Uh, White, white, blue, and two blues actually. Turquoise and dark blue. So so would you say that, that, I mean, has that been your best marketing approach to this day? Or what do you, like, what do you think is the best marketing approach? Now, Now, let me preface this with this. Okay. For new, for like new customers, What's the best marketing approach that you've taken, or what do you, what's the best marketing thing that you've done to attract new business or new customers? So, um, one, I, like obviously, you, new people coming in, you want immediate gratification, right? They want leads. How do I get leads in today? Um, one of the biggest things that we did is also while working on those leads, we did work on our branding and we put that out there. It's like kind of like SEO; it's a longer it's a longer right. play. But a year, two years in after you've been doing it, it makes a humongous difference. So if you're working on marketing, make sure and do those long-term plays while you're working on the short-term plays. But as for the short-term plays, uh, we set up, there's like, in roofing, there's a a kind of a a triangle, if you will, three different options that you have uh, for lead gen. So you have, you know, social and internet, like Google social, uh, you have relationships, which is like realtors, insurance agents, things along that which line. Which is huge. Yeah. And then you have door knocking. So most of the time, a roofing company is good at one of those, maybe two of those, not all three of those. Um, so every company is a little bit different. We were more of a relationship person. Uh, and then social media, we had some storms. We were first to market uh, hitting those storms when they came through. Like the storm was happening and I'm on doing the, the ads myself. Love like it. I took some Hailed classes. In? Yeah, so yeah. there's here, geo-targeting <laughs> yeah. the place. Places, you know, so as the ads kicking in, you know, the storm's just finishing up. So we're, we're you know, it's important to be first there. Uh, but that's what we did. But now we want to work on our door knocking and, you know, getting the information because we'd like to cover all three of those angles. But uh, any one of those, whichever one works best uh, for that particular person, there's some people that are monsters at door knocking that have never talked to, you know, a realtor or a relationship ever, or not even on Facebook. And right. it's, you know, to each their own. Yeah. So, um, I'm, this is how I, I go all in on everything if I do something. So yeah. my two cents on this is I would look, if, I, if I'm you going into a market, I would look at to see which one is the biggest weakness of these companies. Where's like, where's the weakness on what they're not doing? And then I would naturally want to hit that hard first. Now I understand what you're saying is it has to match whoever's in your business. Like, are they good at those things? Not good at those things, whatever it is. But I think if you do all of it, you do all of it, yeah. that's the right answer. 
to, yeah. to really set yourself apart to be like what I call the five percenters, the guys that are the ones that actually take action, put things in place, implement them, and then want to be the best in their business. Now, I'm not saying the biggest just to be the biggest, but the best, like yes. the most reputable matters. Yep. Um, I believe you have to implement all of those things. So the guys that can really win the game, the guys that can really scale, at least to what I've witnessed thus far, is the guys that are implementing all of those things and implementing them successfully, and then they take it and scale it. I, I agree 100%. Like, why would you leave an avenue off of the table? Why? Why? And that makes sense because there's people that do certain things. There's people that get on Facebook. There's people that don't get on Facebook. You know, there's there's people that, you know, will be receptive to door knockers. There's people that won't be receptive to door knockers. So you, you if you're touching every angle, like we do Google Guaranteed, we do Google, we do social, you know, we're, we're getting more into door knockings. We do the relationship. Like, we try to cover every single aspect. And I agree with you. Those are the people that are going to be successful because it gives you a chance with every customer. Well, and it sets you apart. It yeah. immediately sets you apart just by implementing all those things because most don't. Uh, kind of shift gears a little bit. And we've talked some about this, but what's been your biggest breakthrough to date that's impacted your growth as a company? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just making the decision to hire people. And as a small business owner, it's, it's scary yeah. to go, hey, you know what? I'm going to hire these people. And now their family's livelihood depends on me. Absolutely. So a lot of people are hesitant. And I was hesitant for a year to pull the trigger yep. on doing that. And when I finally did, you realize, hey, you're only one person. Like, I'm doing sales. I'm doing marketing. I'm doing billing. I'm doing, like, all of this stuff. And when I started hiring other people, like, and you don't have to spend a ton of money on this, too, for the record. So my first, one of my first hires uh, that wasn't a sales rep, which is commission-based, right. uh, I got a virtual assistant uh, for $6 an hour. They answered the phone 12 hours a day. They took uh, messages. They, they just, like, relieved me from so much stuff. And they could do anything else. Like, I'm like, hey, pull up these people. Pull up all the realtors' phone numbers. Do this. And, like, whatever you want. So, like, you don't have to spend a ton of money. Like, even if you just need a virtual assistant to relieve some stress, you can do that for 6 bucks an hour. So I did that. That was great. Then we started getting on and hiring more people. And that's when you can diversify and do a lot more uh, because you have more time to focus on growing instead of running. Yeah, got it. You had to... I mean, you had to bring people in and then trust them to be able to do the job. And you, I mean, in the meantime, that was a good solution. Do you use or have you used like a, a an answering service or an after hours answering service? So I still, so that virtual assistant, I still have today. Okay. Um, so we have our, uh, the person that answers the phone from eight to five. Well, she answers the phone from five to midnight now. Uh, and then eight to eight on Saturday and Sunday. So we got coverage seven days a week. I think we pay her 300 bucks a week or something, and she covers like 60 hours of phone time, which is pretty chill. She has to, she doesn't have to do a whole lot besides phones, but that, having that, because if you look at like Google My Business and these other things, it goes by who's open. If you're the only one open at 10 o'clock at night, you're that's showing the on there, you're getting the call. Absolutely. They're popping you up. So to have somebody covering the phone at 10 o'clock at night for six bucks for the hour, like that's, a, it's, yeah, it's Dude, a no you're brainer. Gonna, you're going to relate so much to my, to my keynote I'm putting on because I talk about these things specifically because they're easy wins. Yeah. People look at it as like, oh shit, I want to pay this money to have this person stay, you know, and take my calls after hours. What they're not looking at is the actual monster upside of being available to take that call is far greater than uh, the, the little minimal amount that you spent to have that person stay on after hours. It, the, yeah. the other side is so much bigger in the potential sales revenue that comes from it that it's worth it. And it's a fact. Obviously, I'm an, I'm an analytical nerd. I love numbers. I track yeah. everything. Yeah. It's a fact. But most people are, look at it short side and say, well, I don't want to spend the extra money to have somebody maybe potentially sit for a day, two days, and not take a single call. It, it's the abundance mindset. It's like, it's going to cost me $300 versus I'm investing $300 to get a $12,000 roof. Exactly. So it, it, if, it you look at it, if you look at it, sorry, I was just doing the math here. Let's say you get one call. And I put everything in the aspect of roofs, right? Like if I'm like trying to talk myself into, you know, going to this event or doing this, I'm like, oh, it's two roofs, like two roofs. So if Sounds you get, familiar. yeah, if you get <laughs> one call at, at night, that entire week, right? You make maybe $4,000 as a business owner. That pays for 13 weeks of her answering the it. phone 60 hours a week on off times. It's a no brainer. I do want to say that Aaron had to use his phone to do the math. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to so say. What? That's dude, fair. Dude, do you think Aaron and I are cut from the same cloth? I really do. <laughs> like, you're <laughs> speaking. Chris is getting excited. When you're talking about stress relief, I'm getting worried about both of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing, I'm doing the same thing when we're coming here. I'm like, okay, guys, in order to make this thing work, what the investment's into, we got to end up here. Like, I'm talking yep. through all these numbers trying to make it work. So I'm no different. Same thing. I think, yep. I think actually most business owners are the same way. Like, yep. you try to figure out what's it going to take to cover the cost of this thing to make it break even. These ones are no brainers, but still, even to this day, 15 years into this business, how 
this is still a problem that people not bring somebody on to take these after hours uh, calls or using virtual answering. So any of that shit, like nobody uses it. And it's such an easy win that can immediately differentiate you regardless of the size of your company yeah. right now. Like it's, it's easy. Big so, time. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just scary for some people. It's either one, they think they can do it all, uh, or two, they're scared to, but there are ways to go around. Like I said, just a virtual assistant, that's easy, you know, but you gotta, you have to help, have help. Period. So there's a plug for VAs out there. If you, if you need <laughs> yeah. it, VAs. I think so, you can get on up, Upwork. Upwork is a great yep. one. Um, there's plenty of VAs out there. Yep. They're all around six bucks an hour. Yep. So conversely, let's go to the other side. Well, hang the, on. Hang, let me okay. hang on. I just, hold oh, you want to keep going? Like, I do because I'm, I'm. this is something I am really passionate about, though, is you also have to make sure, let's say you take on a VA, um, you have an after hours answering service. You have to pay attention to how they're answering your calls. Ah, for sure. I because, see where Chris is going. Because I can tell you in my in my time of li- like we listen, we listen to five hundred thousand minutes a month. Really? Five hundred thousand minutes a month is where my call listing reporting team is listening to uh, call volumes for all of our customers. Wow. That's a shitload of calls. That's a lot. So in the beginning when it was me, I would listen to these phone calls and listen to these you know, after hours answering services, answer the phones and just butcher the leads coming in or be a bad representation of business. And it ha- still happens so much today. Actually, more often it happens than not. It's unfortunate. So you've got to pay attention when, you're, when, you're, when you bring these people on to at least listen to a few calls and make sure you understand how they're representing you on the phone. 100%. Super important. That was one of the biggest things. A lot of those people work super hard. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, they're totally down for whatever they have to do. That's why this lady switched, uh, RVA switched schedules. So she went to evening schedule and then still on the weekends does day schedule. So like they're willing to do anything, but that was one of the biggest things uh, that we looked for was one, listening to how they answered the phone, listening to make sure that they sounded like they were yeah, professional, they're representing your company. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I agree with you 100%. Well, so, and you're gonna love this piece of it too. Like um, when I get into it is, I'm really passionate about it because we can talk about marketing all day long, all this shit. Yep. If somebody calls in and that's who's answering your phone call and they butcher it, the fuck are you doing business for? What, what are we doing? Yep. You have to, and typically what it is, is it's like, obviously it's, it doesn't, it's not a high paying position, right. but what's interesting is it can be the most impactful position on you because if yeah. they butcher the call, if they're missing objections, they don't sound professional, if they sound like an asshole on the phone, yep. if they're, you know, their, their skill isn't refined, they're not booking the. They're not booking the job. No. So nothing else matters. No marketing. No door. None of this shit matters. Yeah, because they're so killing it. it. Exactly, and people ignore it. Yep. So even some of like the biggest companies we work with too, like put things in place and you let it fizzle out. Then you put it back in place in Q2 and it fizzles out. You put it back. In, I look at it as like holy shit. Look at all the potential missed revenue we just lost because we didn't spend an extra hour, two hours a month with Jill to help make her better. Well, you, you never even know in the, sorry, man, in the Please. roofing industry, like one call could be an apartment complex. That's a $2 million deal. It. You know I what I mean? It. So it's like, you got to treat every single call with that professionalism. Here's why it's super important as a business owner, growing business owner, you get farther and farther away from the phone call. So a lot of times people will say, Hey, my marketing's not working. Business is down. Right. And it's because they didn't identify that those CSRs answering the phone had a conversion problem, right? They yep. couldn't handle, obje- they can answer the phone and say your name and give your phone number, but you as the business owner have got to understand, are we converting, right? right. Is our marketing doing what it's supposed to be doing, but we're dropping it down. That's why it's super important. So right on, man, kudos to you for doing that. Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah, and you got to own it, man. You have all these people that you've hired, you have on staff now that are banking on you to make good decisions, right? Like that's, that's the... I don't want to say burden we bear, but it kind of can be, right? Yeah, because for you, real. Because you're like, I mean, this, that's as personal as it gets, impacting somebody's livelihood by your decision making. So I, uh, I commend you for doing <laughs> those things because it's those little things like that that can make such a big difference. Now, I want to switch gears again on this too. So um, I want to talk about, because this isn't, ha- hasn't been all sunshine and roses, right? There's yeah, definitely yeah. shit that you run into that we all run into in growing our business. That was like a uh, damn shit went south real quick. And then it's how you respond to that is another indicator on how your business is gonna go. Yeah. So is there a time when you, like, you ran into a problem, an issue, or something that impacted the business negatively that you had to learn from and then grow? Um, I'm sure there is. We've been pretty fortunate. Or what's a big mistake maybe you've made that you've been able to learn from as you've grown the company? Um, I would say looking into who you partner with is extremely important. Uh, I'm very gung-ho. I'm like one of those people, like, I was a good sales rep, but they, like they say, the best sales reps are the easiest soul. Sell, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, dude, that sounds great. Let's do it. Um, so I, I didn't look into as much as I should have when partying with some people. Um, and I got a couple uh, bad investments on like some SEO and some different things like that. So I think just making sure 
to do your research. But also, I think there is a there's a other side to that too. Like, there's people that over research thing and look over stuff, and like they've been going through it for analysis six months. Analysis paralysis. paralysis. Yeah, I'm like, okay, there's got to be a median here. Like, you just got to be at even ground. It's like, okay, don't jump right in without looking at anything, but also don't take six months to go through and pick through, you know, whatever, because you're losing every every day, every minute. You're not doing you're stuff. Just you're losing wasting it. time. So learn as much as you need about them research, find out, you know, whatever it is, and then pull the trigger. Yeah. And I want to add to that and to say, if you're going to, um, if you're going to invest money into a vendor partner, um, yes, you're, you're, you believe that they can help move your business forward, make you big. That's the reason you're investing in them one way, shape or form. But you also have to, uh, you also have to put in some meaningful time with them to continue to scale the business yeah. properly, the best way. So you can't just be like, here you go guys. And then ignore monthly reporting calls or whatever, you got to be a part of it too. Now yeah. they're doing the work for you, but from a strategic perspective and a numbers perspective, you got to know and understand, be able to actually give meaningful feedback to keep moving the thing forward. So I encourage you, if you're going to bring on a vendor, don't just set it and forget it. I've never, I've never worked with one partner where I didn't feel like I had valuable information to help. Of they, they could be the greatest person ever, but if they don't know what's going on in your market and what's like, you don't know. Well, you may because you're, but, you're well, Indiana, but uh, most people, you know, they don't know that a hailstorm just happened. Like I got, hey, this is what's going on. This is where it hit. This is what we need to do. You have to be in contact to get the best possible see, result. See, so you're right. In this instance, this is what makes us such badasses. That was a self plug for Rhino. Yeah. But, but think about it. It's been 15 years of me dialing this process in for HVAC plumbing electrical guys. Guess who also really benefits from hailstorms? Who's that? HVAC. HVAC. Oh yeah, because they get the, the, that's what we have, you know, on a lot of these hail claims. You know, it's always AC units, this and that. So, so yeah, that makes so sense. So we are constantly watching weather patterns. Yeah. Constantly watching well, weather patterns, storms. We have, we have two huge commercial claims right now that we're not even sure if we're going to get the roofs or not, but there's like Hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand uh, dollar AC unit systems on the roof that just in itself are a massive six figure claim. Well, so and this is again why you know for our listeners why you know I've been going down this roofing path is and the why the big private equity players in our space are buying roofing companies is there's an easy cross sell opportunity between the two. There's yeah. an easy cross. So there's a lot of cross. And by the way, uh, from my world, it is significantly easier to bring in lead volume for roofing companies versus HVAC. HVAC is hard as shit because it's so, yep. so seasonal. There's a, it's a lot more, it's a lot more uh, even keel, I think, for the most part in regards to search volume for, for roofing. And I, I think uh, to piggyback on that too is, you know, we, you, what I've learned about um, having been in the industry this long, like, or, or understanding the industry this long is there's a lot of, you know, storm chasers. And I understand for why sure. you become an order taker at that point, right? Like you have processes in place for that. But again, I believe the most well-rounded biggest players are the ones who are not only going to focus on that, but they're also going to focus on well, how about just some organic, like just some organic people saying roof repair, roof, you know, uh, roof replacement costs, like the organic shit that's not chasing a storm. If you can win both of these things and your relationships that you have, that's how you win the game. Trifecta. That's how you become the big players. Trifecta. That's how it is. And that's why a lot of these big private equity guys that are snatching up these companies are seeing how easy it is to take what they've done, processes, mm -hmm. implement them into them, pull them into their system, and then scale it as a whole. It's actually going to be really awesome. Yeah. Aaron, you did sound excited about doing research and marketing companies. Were you getting ready to announce a new partnership right on the air here? No, I'm actually working with uh, somebody. Um, no, I'm just kidding. So I'm talking to Jeff, and we're talking to Rhino. So he's, he's got to spit me his pitch. I, uh, I was getting excited. I thought he was going to make a big announcement that I didn't know about. No, you got to earn it. You yeah, got to earn it. You got to kill it on Friday for me, bro. You how about earn it. How about the VIP uh, we will buy you free drinks all night? <laughs> Yeah, that comes with it. That's that's uh, part of the plug. That's part of the deal. That's part of the plug, bro. Why, why are you overthinking it, bro? <laughs> actually, actually, let me what wait. I just say though, you got to do your research to talk to people. I'm yeah. waiting on I'm waiting on you to kill it, man. I'm, we got we got big expectations. We're pulling for stuff you. for you now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, one quick thing. I think what I hear him saying is, if you would just step out of the picture, Jeff, uh, then we would be good together. We he's already, just going to work directly with me. We'd already ink this deal, is what you're saying, Chris. No, we're just going to work this deal together. What he and I are in it now. So, um, and by the way, I, I did pull up some uh, some local Indianapolis information to share on the, my uh, in my keynote presentation. So uh -huh. you'll see it. I like it. All right. Mama didn't raise no fool. Indy Roof Company might be in there. It I don't might know. Might be. We'll see. Just it's not the top, but it's on there. Um, okay, so let's oh, go ahead and finish with this. That was a plug. so it's not yet, <clears throat> not yet. Um, now, okay, great. Marketing, awesome. You got to have the right people, awesome. But no, is there? There also has to be some consistent training that you're doing, right? With different, like, is there is there some sort of ongoing training or consistent training that you do with any of your staff to continue to make them better at the craft? Absolutely, man. You right. want to continue to what what. 
Adam says it, and I'm probably going to butcher it, but he said, you don't build businesses, you build people. Absolutely. And those people are what make your business. Amen. And so we've tried to consistently do training. Um, we do a lot of the stuff. We went to the top rep event that they had in Indianapolis. I was supposed to go. Uh, where are you? Yeah. yeah. So they, uh, we went to that. We had nine guys go. Uh, we told them that we wanted them to pay for half of it just to see who was invested. And we had uh, nine of our guys that say, hey, yeah, I'm ready to pay. Da, da, da. That's great, and then man. We, we paid for the whole thing. Yeah, of but course. We told them afterwards. You, know, just, like, you it, just wanted to get that accountability. Like, are you willing to do that? Like, who, how committed are you? Who wants to work on themselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know gotcha. what I mean? And so you. we do that. And we started this year uh, in March. And we're going to start making it an annual thing. We rent uh, like a huge... 20 bedroom cabin in Gatlinburg and we go down there and just have an entire curriculum for Love like three it. days where we train it's just like the revolt retreats yeah, yeah. man we do the same kind of deal would your marketing company get an invite next year yeah if they're a super dope marketing company I'd love to have them <laughs> I, now I, I'm feeling that <laughs> but just just one of us yeah. oh. <laughs> so uh, but yeah you want to invest in your people 100% um, and just even if they know stuff now things are changing things 100%. are evolving uh, another thing that I'll say is uh, back to the systems of processes. This is one thing that we didn't have. We had really smooth processes, but they weren't written down. Ooh, documented processes. Yeah. Documented process. That's one thing Kaminsky came in and put into place because like, yeah, she's great at scheduling. What happens when she goes on vacation? What happens if she gets sick? Then everybody's like, well, what do we do? Yep. You know, and you can't ever leave and go on vacation and just be stress-free. So it's not only for the company's benefit, but your employees' benefits. They can go, hey, here's the paperwork, exactly how to do this. I'm out of here for the week. Yeah. And by the way, if that sounds like it sucks to document processes, uh, it's because it does. <laughs> uh, it takes a lot of work to do, but it's something that we did at Rhino that we implemented. Minute, well, you, want, you want to share? Jeff, yeah. I was going to say, Aaron, that's, uh, so we just had everyone at Rhino, all the employees for their specific apart departments wrote one process. Yeah. So we, you know, we had 50 processes that were written. It wasn't labor intensive because you only wrote one. Yep. So it was super cool. Yeah. So if you want to, if you are interested in that, I'd be happy to help you with it. But I mean, well, it works we get, really we basically, well. The point being is like, even if you're listening and like, and you need some help doing it, um, typically the employees are kind of like, you give them one, hey, you write the process for this thing that you're already doing. They kind of feel like good about being able to do it. Some people kind of are, you know, like, nah, I don't yeah. want to do this. But if you have them write one process, you got you got to go back and double check it. Yeah. But it just gets them kind of engaged in here's it. A, here's a trick I learned from Kaminsky uh, on how to have your people learn how to do this, right? So you have them write an SOP on making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, uh -huh. right? And so Adam goes and gets jelly, bread, peanut butter, all this stuff. And everybody's sitting around and everybody has to write an SOP. And then we grab them and we're like, whose is the best? So we pick the best one, right? Because nobody ever realizes how detailed you have to get, right? Because <laughs> you want to take the guy that's working at Taco Bell to come in and to say, here's a list, do this. So you ha it has to be very specific. Sure. So we start going through this and it's like, okay, first open the bread. So he grabs the bread and just rips it open and like bread goes flying everywhere. And they're like, well, no, you're supposed to twist the top. Well, you didn't put that in there. How am I supposed to know that? You know, and he's like, okay, now take the jelly and uh, smear it on. So he grabs the jelly and smears it on the table. Like, no, you put it on the bread. Like, you didn't tell me that. How am I supposed to? So he did this whole thing. And by the end of it, you're like, okay, I really understand now. Like you have to be extremely detailed in these SOPs. That's a good analogy. I, I like that. We should do that at Rhino. I love PB&J. I love PB&J too. Yeah. We'll see who makes the best PBJ. Okay, listen, we're about 40 minutes into this particular podcast and I want to go ahead and start to wrap, but I want to ask one more last question. Actually, I'm going to ask two more last questions of you. These ones should be pretty easy, but um, clearly you've had some you've had some uh, success and you grew the company fairly quick. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you're saying a lot of, of, of really smart things that, that a lot of tenured business owners would say to me. So I recognize that you picked up on some of these skill sets quickly, implemented fast, which, by the way, is something you need to hear. Implement fast, fail fast, implement fast. Um, and then you've been able to scale a business. So I want to, to you to give some advice because you know how this industry is, as I've learned, is people will – it's kind of a, a, a cannibalistic industry where people are splitting off and starting their own, and then they'll grow it to – a certain size, they don't know how to grow it, but there's a lot of people splitting off, sales guys maybe splitting off and because they're not getting enough money or whatever it is, starting their own roofing company. Or they think it's easy. Or and whatever, they of course, they think it's easy. <laughs> so, but what's a, what's a really good piece of advice that you would give to somebody who's kind of just starting out in the industry? Like, what is one thing that you're like, hey, if nothing else, like this is something you have to think about when starting your business or trying to scale your business? 
Um, one, realize that your reputation is going to be who you are. So approach everything with integrity. Um, you know, don't go in for a quick buck trying to make a dollar. Um, one of the biggest things that we did uh, to gain credibility fast and early is really work on our Google My Business page. And I have some friends that are in the HVAC space, um, and I've been telling him since he started his business, I'm like, dude, get your reviews, go through. You can post on Google My Business, just like social media, yep. and that makes you more relevant, and then you add your photos. Uh, but you get those reviews, and then people look up everything. And when you go to look up stuff, what you have is you know maybe Google Guaranteed, some Google ads, which most people glaze over, yep. right? And they go to Google My Business because you can see it on the map, you can see the information right yep. there, you can see the real reviews, and it's free. So work on building your reputation, um, not only as you know at each job with the integrity of how you approach it, but online presence because everything's digital these That's days. That's really good, man. That's really good advice. Yeah, um, I believe in this. This is now. Let me. I'm gonna unpack this. I believe in rep. I believe in reputation over revenue. Now hear me out. Yep. Reputation over revenue because as the reputation grows, because you're doing the business right, you're treating your employees right, you're doing the job right, you're doing it with care, your revenue starts to grow. If you focus on reputation over revenue, not saying not saying don't implement new things, don't go out and, do, and sell shit. I'm saying reputation matters that much because it yeah. can also go the other way. Well, here's the thing. And when it goes the other way, peace out. On the reputation thing, you want to manage that because what happens when people, like no roofing company is perfect. Like things are going to happen. Bushes are going to get, you know, broke, like whatever. But how do you handle Shit it? happens. What do people do when they're shitty? They go leave you a bad review, right? right? So if you're, if you're not actively asking for good reviews on the people that you're making happy, you're killing yourself. Like we have 746 uh, reviews yeah, right. and we got a 4.9. There's a lot. I got... 25 bad reviews from people, you know, or 20 or I don't know what it is. Can't make I, everybody happy. Yeah, you can't make everybody happy. But if I didn't ask for the positive reviews, I'd be at like a 3.5 or something. So you yeah. have to actively manage your reputation. 100%. 100%. And, and listen, like negative reviews, it's not if, it's when. They're going to happen because yep. you can't please everybody. And sometimes even if you go and try to resolve it, it's not going to happen. Like that person is just done. Yeah. But best thing you can do is handle how you take care of it and how you handle your reputation and say, you know what, made a mistake, we tried to make it right, but you got to respond to it. Yes, 100%. I got think it. if you're transparent with integrity, look, I've been to Dunkin' Donuts a thousand times. They've messed up my coffee 20 times. Right. I understand that's not the, the norm, that's the exception. So right. to your point, if you're doing it correctly, the integrity is there. I think people understand, they appreciate the human response and aspect to it. So I think you're doing it right. Kudos. I, I think I trust uh, companies that have a couple bad yes. reviews over to your point of like perfect five star everybody oh, yeah. everybody loves it this is great like you gotta buy these now like I'm like okay hold on a second here <laughs> Look, I think people are understanding to yeah. your point I mean yeah. I think they expect things like most that people. are gonna come up Mo most people yeah. and that's who you want as your client that right. person that understands correct okay so last question for you this is the easy one um, what's next for you um, so there's a lot of stuff that we want to do man uh, I, I think Besides an amazing digital marketing partner, what's next? For Besides you? figuring out our Plug. next amazing digital marketing <laughs> partner, <laughs> right uh, which is that's definitely uh, high on the priority list. Friday, um, Friday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we want to we want to get into solar. I think it goes hand it's, in hand with roofing. Oh, it's a no brainer, right? Yep. But we've done a lot of research, and there's dealers, and then you know you don't get as much money and you're kind of dependent on them to like service your customers and when you're the face, right? So if they do something to piss you off, there's nothing that you can do yeah, about right. it. So it's like you want to balance that versus there's a lot of work that goes into doing it yourself. So we're just kind of weighing our options now, but by the end of 22, we want to have a solar division rolled out because we're installing 1,500 roofs a year. That's 1,500 possible upsells. Absolutely. Hey man, guess, guess what's really big in Phoenix? Solar. solar. Wow, I've been in that game a long time. I've been in that game a long time. You, solar game. You got to hey, talk to Tony time. at roofing.com. Yeah, so yeah. apparently he's a I, solar I expert. I know Tony, actually. We're in Revolt together. Oh, cool. As are we. Well, listen, man, I, I'm excited to, uh, to have gotten you on here and you share your story and the success, man. And congratulations. Like, I Thank love you. hearing stories like that, especially when it's one of my boys, one of my Hoosiers. Yeah, buddy. Um, so suck. I appreciate you sharing that. And listen, for our listeners, he, Jeff, shut up. Suck. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> the Jeff is the now Jeff. the Tim again. The Tim. Um, so for our listeners, you know, hopefully you could take something away from this too. Like, again, we've heard it a million times. 
processes, you got to put them in place, and then you have to. Well, first off, you, what what gets what gets measured gets managed. Like remember that. Like yes. you got to have some things in place to be able to actually scale something. But having good leadership in place, or even just good employees, trusting them to do the job for you, because you can't do everything. You certainly can't scale a business all by yourself. But these are things that you have to do that are easy things that you can do. And guess what? Your reputation matters. Take care of people. I say the best marketing strategy ever is to genuinely care. Yeah. Genuinely care. It's like you said, take care of your people. They will take care of your customer. 100%. Agreed 100%. And I'm with that. If you if you take care of the customers, it'll get around. People are going to know. 100%. Yep. Well, so man, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm stoked. And then, uh, like, listen, we get to do this a few times, you know, during the uh, during the uh, the uh, trade show. So I'm excited. I'm loving the roofing industry, man. So far, it's been great. I'm already meeting great people like Aaron. So, listeners, again, we appreciate you guys so much. Um, leave a review. Obviously, share this with somebody who you know needs to hear this. Um, it's been absolutely incredible to see the volume of downloads that we have and the growth of this podcast has had over the last, say, almost two years now. Um, and we're extremely grateful. So until next time, we'll see you. Listeners, thank you so much again for listening to this podcast week after week. We are extremely grateful. Again, the whole purpose of this podcast is to give back to the home services industry that we love so much, whether you're a rhino or not. We really, really appreciate all the subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go in and subscribe and you'll get all the episodes sent to you automatically weekly. Also, we have really enjoyed your feedback. Uh, it's so meaningful for us when we get to read the nice comments that you guys put. So keep doing that. And if you don't know how to do it, here's what you got to do. You search for To The Point Home Services on Apple Podcasts. You click on our profile, scroll all the way down to the bottom and hit write a review and be honest and share your story and how the podcast has impacted you and your business. Thanks again from the bottom of our hearts at To The Point Home Services Podcast. We appreciate you.